Hello, uh, this is Charles. Today I have this uh, laptop, it's an HP. It is a model 15BS, 152NIA. Someone told me that this laptop does not turn on, it was dropped in water. So, I'm going to take out the housing and we we'll check inside and see if we can fix it. The housing is out. So here shows that the person who first worked on it did this here. I see made a jumper and I looks like did some other kind of stuff here. We plucked out many of these capacitors. I'm going to first clean this motherboard because it really looks so messed up. Alright, now this one is clean. So I'm going to take my multimeter and try to measure for, for short circuit. So when I measure here at the bar. Yeah, now after the second MOSFET, there is a short. I think the reason why the first person to fix this, he made a jumper here because that MOSFET was heating up. So the, the connector connects at the back and connects here. Then this MOSFET connects to this. So there is a short here. And that's why he connected the jumper because this MOSFET was heating up. This car, I'm going to connect my power supply and see what's go what's getting hot. I'll connect the positive to the output of the MOSFET, then the negative to ground. Now you know what? I've connected the power supply. However, this part doesn't seem to be short, which looks like the short is actually not on the main output. Now I'm going to measure this part. You can see it more and see which part is actually getting short. Because remember, at first I measured when both of these are connected. Okay, here doesn't seem to have a short. However, the resistance is fluctuating is also very small because. 175 is quite small. No, wait. This part was shot into ground at first. However, though it doesn't look like it's short, the resistance that the multimeter is showing is still very small. Because 172 is very small. This should be more than. If I go to Ohm's mode or resistance mode, this one is in milliohms. After the first MOSFET, the same, but here 179. So let me connect the power supply again. Okay, this part is consuming no current. Now you know what I'm going to do? Let me get a, a MOSFET, put it here, then connect a power jack and see what happens. So I've got a donor board here. Let me measure this one and see how much. This one is 0 0.5. Let me take out this. Basically, the MOSFET should be giving out around 0 0.5. 0.7 so it is high
So it is done. Let me wait for it to cool down. All right, now it is cool. Let me plug in the charger. Does not light up. Let me try to see if this part is heating up. Okay. So nothing is heating up. So let me measure and see if this voltage is able to go through from the first MOSFET. Speed. Yeah, even the third, the second most speed, and the fuse. Now let me measure and see if we have 3.3. So we don't have 3.3, we don't have 5 volts. Feeling like there's something getting warm. So let me measure here on the AC. So it seems like there's no 3.3. This is where the 5 and 3 volts come from. So at the bottom here is where the chip that controls both of them. So I'm going to try and diagonalize and see if do we have 19 here. Yeah, 19 that powers up the first MOSFET is here. Now, I, I couldn't get the schematics of this motherboard, however, I'll try to look for the data sheet of this chip. So I'm going to try to measure the pinouts from the data sheet. So let me go down to the pinouts. So at the pinouts, the data sheet shows that pin 12 is V in. So on pin 12, that's why we should have volts. However, in continuity mode, looks like pin 12 is short to ground. Now, this is a resistor, and this resistor seems to be open. But on top of it, it needs to be 2.20. So, 2.20 should be able to make the beep. And if pin 12 is V in, it should be connected to 19. So probably this chip was short and the resistor was blown up. When I compare with this other motherboard, which are the kind of like in the same category, this one doesn't have the chip, I actually took it out. This same resistor is the same here and the readings are the same on top. When I measure it in continuity mode, this one reads. When I measure this one, it does not. And when I measure on pin 12 of this other motherboard, it's not sure to ground. So which means this chip, basically the V in of this chip was short and the resistor that controls all the fuse that controls the input was blown out. So I think what I have to do, I have to replace this chip and I have to replace this fuse. So let's do it faster, faster. So 
so it is out let me put it here so the fuse is in position let me take out this tube and I'm going to look for another one to replace Right, so it is out. First thing I'm going to do is to see if you have got rid of the shirt because there was a shirt on pin 12. So let me see pin 12. Yeah, so there's no shirt on pin 12, the shirt was inside the chip. So that is a very good sign. Let me clean this part and try to get another chip to replace here so I've got this from Lenovo so I'm going to take this one out of here and put it here yeah chip is out yeah so let me put it in position Put some flux. So the chip is in position. So let me connect the charger. Hope it works out. Yep, we have the light that shows that the 3.3 volts is up. So let me put back in the housing, connect the power cable, the power button, connect it around the screen, and try to power on and see if it can turn on. So here's the charger. Yeah, charger inside. Yeah, light is on. Yeah, light is turning on at this side. I don't know if you can see. Now when I press the power button, light turns on briefly and goes off. Now this is an indication that there must be some secondary votes that are not showing up. So let me first open here, get out the power button and try to see which type of votes not showing up. Connect my probe on ground. See if it comes up. 3.3 comes up. However, it goes down. See comes up. The fan stops. Lights goes off. And then votes goes down. Okay, so let me check you on the processor votes. Yeah, processor votes comes up 1.7 goes down. Let me check RAM votes. So this coil here votes has not come up.
So hold still as no show up. I guess this is the power supply for RAM. Charging bolts is already there. So I think ROM, ROM circuit is the one with the issue. Okay. Now let me take out the motherboard again and try to check. So motherboard is out. So this is the chip that gives out RAM volts. It should have volts on different pins for it to give out RAM volts here. Now this part here seems like these capacitors we are taking out. Probably by the first person who tried to fix it. So let me put my multimeter in continuity mode and try to see if we have a shot on pin 9. So pin 9 has no shot. However, we have a shot on the coil. We have a shot on the output. Now let me first take out the RAM. Maybe this one is under the shot. Yeah, we still have a shot. Okay. Now this jumper is the one that takes votes from the RAM to the processor. Actually, this votes powers up the section that controls RAM inside the processor. Let me disconnect this jumper and see if the problem is actually from the processor. And if the shot is in the processor, that is a very bad news. If it is not, then we shall figure out how to fix it. is disconnected so these two jumpers they are connected here to actually connect the votes from the RAM to power on the section in the CPU however the bad thing looks like the internal circuit of the processor is the one that is short Now this is very very bad because it makes all the work we've been doing useless. <laughs> okay. Now let me show you that here there is no short anymore because the short was actually from the CPU. You see now the core is not short. Because actually the short was coming from the CPU. That's bad. Oh no.